Welcome to Start Up With Poland, the show where we delve into some fascinating stories from Poland's startup ecosystem. My name is Tessa McKeever and I am your host. Now, my guest today is Jan Winkler. Jan is professional head of structural monitoring at Atkins Realis, one of the world's leading engineering companies, and he's also co-founder of the startup DES. For the last 15 years, Jan was living in Denmark. He graduated with a PhD from the Technical University of Denmark and was also a visiting researcher at the University of Texas in Austin. He specializes in the use of artificial intelligence, specifically computer vision in infrastructure management. He was chosen as a top 100 business development talent in Denmark, whilst his pioneering R&D work was awarded by several international institutions. Jan recently relocated to Warsaw with his family, and I'm delighted to have him with us here today. Jan, wonderful to have you with us here today. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Now, let's deep dive into these questions. First, I would like you to tell us about the challenges that the infrastructure world faces and how specifically, of course, your engagement in Atkins Realis and DES has you know, impacts on right, this world. Yeah. So just start with a brief like, introduction um, and make, make this uh, problem more, more relevant for everyone because we all use bridges, tunnels and buildings um, and we all care about safety. So uh, our infrastructure world is is, is uh, having an issue. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a global issue with aging infrastructure. Okay. Um, it's not safe to use in some regions of the world. So we are spending roughly three hundred billion dollars per year on operation and maintenance of uh, of an infrastructure. Wow. Uh, and despite that investment, we monitor less than one percent of the transportation assets. Oh, so wow. uh, and we've got a growing number of catastrophes in developed countries and in developing countries. Um, so, um, um, so this is actually a global issue that we are facing at the moment as, as a whole, um, as a whole engineering uh, uh, and uh, construction sector. And the reason why is that this is the, one of the least digitized sectors in the world. Um, it's very conservative. We are still using sensors to collect data on asset health from 1960s. So um, they are definitely not scalable. Nice. Um, and so if we could have a technology that allows you to collect data on asset health mm -hmm. in an affordable and scalable way, so we could not only monitor more structures to keep mm -hmm. our infrastructure mm -hmm. safer, uh, but you could also extend the service life of a, an existing infrastructure and thereby save like thousands of tons of CO2 mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. you know, generated if you have to build something new. And this is where Atkins Real is global expertise and DS uh, mobile app technology comes in. Wonderful. Yeah, well, that's I, I didn't know many of these statistics, yeah. so that's that's uh, a bit scary <laughs> <That's true. laughs> to think about them, but but uh, fascinating. So tell me, you know, uh, more about your solution and the technology mm -hmm. that you've created. Right. So um, the technology that we've introduced to the market mm -hmm. is uh, is based on images, so it's hopefully okay. easy to to explain. So what we've developed is a is a monitoring platform for infrastructure that is using. Uh, it's compatible with all commonly available cameras, so CCTV okay. cameras, smartphones, drones, DLR cameras. And with the AI and specifically computer vision, we are turning these images into actionable intelligence for our clients okay. so they can better manage their, their infrastructure. Um, and especially the mobile app, you know, it's the, it's the ISO certified mobile app that, that is scalable, easy to use. Uh, and this is something, you know, this is where we have a perfect match with Atkins Realis because Atkins Realis has operations in more than 100 countries. Okay. So the mobile app can be used by all project teams in all regions to support clients and provide insights and you know, ex ex enhance the project delivery. So, um, so this, is, this, this is what we've done, but we also look at the, the entire problem more broadly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, uh, we, we wanna share our knowledge. So we are actually uh, releasing papers. We are presenting at conferences. Uh, we are arranging webinars because we have to act together as a as a sector, so stakeholders, asset owners, uh -huh, engineering uh -huh, consultancies, uh -huh, uh -huh. startups, to make a to make a change to to drive the behaviors we would like to see in this sector. Okay, fantastic. So, sort of an element of educating absolutely yeah. the market. And how generally has the market responded? You know, to to your technology, and do you have maybe any specific examples? 
uh, we've, we've got a couple actually, but I think that you know uh, today I think we could focus on uh, on a story of a client that actually was willing to try new things, mm-hmm. is managing a critical infrastructure, and through the use of new technology they extended the service life, you know, and uh, and save some money. So that's the story of a Danish asset owner, the Sun and Belt. Mm-hmm. It's uh, responsible for Great Belt Bridge, which is the okay. longest uh, suspension bridge in Europe. The Erison Bridge, which is linking Denmark and Sweden, and that's the one from TV series, some people uh-huh, recall uh-huh. <laughs> And the owner of uh, now under construction, immer- the longest immersed tunnel, uh, Femur and Tunnel. So this particular client had a very ambitious, sustainable goals. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they've used the mobile app. Their technicians use mm-hmm. the mobile app with no pure structural monitoring experience. So this is where the scalability and easiness of use comes in. And uh, they collected data. Based on this data, they decided it to, you know, there was a maintenance action mm-hmm. that was triggered based on this data. They extended service life of this particular structural element and thereby extended life of a bridge in a safe manner. So you've got, you know, and this particular client, through the use of digital tools, mm-hmm. they extended the service life of this bridge by 100 years. So you're wow. designing a bridge for 100 years, and then through the use of digital smart tools, not only ours, but also others, you can extend the service life by, by another 100 years. That's and thereby amazing. they've saved, I think, 750 tons of CO2. So this is like a, a nice and compelling story. And we've got not only clients that will try this technology, but I also would like to co-present with you during conferences, even a co-write paper, being a co-author of the paper. So I think there is a general understanding in the sector that we have to act together because we've got this yeah. global issue. Uh, so the response was, was was very good so far. Well, that's fantastic. I'm imp- very impressed by those statistics. But also, you know, I'm always fascinated to hear about how corporations, uh, corporates, you know, cooperate with yeah. startups. And, uh, you know, how has it been with Atkins, Ruralis and Des cooperating yeah. together? You know, tell, tell us more about that. Yeah, I think we, we really need best from both of these worlds. If we mm-hmm. want to drive the, yeah. the behaviors we want to see uh, in, in this sector, um, known as least digitized sector, we really need like best of both of these worlds. So our collaboration is an effort of you know a number of people. So I'm mm-hmm. really lucky to be working with actually one of the most creative people in, in, in AEC sector. Um, so like, you know, you've got these two different perspectives because uh, startup sometimes over focus on engineering mm-hmm. and uh, not on product market fit while engineering consultancies focus on, on delivering and mm-hmm. on, on execution because the market is very competitive. So that's why it's so important to introduce this innovative tools, to early adopt this innovative uh-huh, tools. Uh-huh. And, and I'm really uh, happy that we managed to do that. And, and I really believe that you know fostering this alliance between startups and engineering consultancies um, and, and asset owners is is really like something fundamental to unlock the, the more efficient and digital future of of this sector. So, so again, teamwork. Yeah, no, fantastic that you are bringing in the two different, yeah. you know, sides of the coin to make to make uh, a, a fantastic whole. So, well done and congratulations at that. Um, I'm always really interested in my guests, you know, personal stories. Sure. And I was fascinated to find out that you had been living in Denmark for the last 15 years, also working a lot with the UK. Um, and you know, please, if you could tell me a bit about that personal story, that would be fantastic. Sure. sure. I mean. I think it's like one of these classic Erasmus exchange stories when you plan to go for six months and you're ending up spending 15 years of your <laughs> life abroad. So this is what happened to us. We went to Denmark, we finished our uh, master's studies. Uh, uh, I did my PhD, then we got a job. Our kids were born, they went to preschool and boom, it's 15 years. So, uh, And then when you relocate back to your home country, it's like sort of re-emigrating because you're because you know you're leaving your comfort zone again. So yeah. it's like we left our comfort zone twice already. But what it makes you is it makes you more resilient as a person and definitely your, your perspective is much more broader. And that's something that, you know, that lasts a, a lifetime. Um, and I think, you know, another part of the story is like a, an importance of like giving back because I've met incredible people in my life that helped me along the way. You know, they helped me to build my confidence. They helped me to build my network. Uh-huh. So what I'm trying to do on top of my daily job is to engage with universities work with you know students you know the, the people are the you know, greatest asset of any country so to make them curious you know so I act as a PhD supervisor and mm-hmm. as an external lecturer um, again speak with them uh, make them curious in technology help them to build their network in the same way people help me uh, so I will be you know forever grateful to my colleagues in Denmark and UK um, for how they helped me and, and I really believe that you can actually relocate without burning bridges you know maintaining your network. And again, I think trust and transparency, like with the you know uh, startup 
corporation collaboration, I think it's fundamental to, to make it work. And talent mobility, I think it's something that's becoming like a global trend. Yeah. So so I think this is something, you know, that everything is doable now. Mm -hmm. And just tell me a bit more about, because you were physically living in Denmark, but the cooperation with the UK, where did that element come in? Yeah, I mean, basically, the uh, it's it's a, it's a story of writing a master thesis with your one of your supervisors being in the UK and being okay. very much into a topic. So he was actually helping along the way and was slowly introducing myself to a, to a, to a team in, in UK. And then I was basically working from day one, sitting in Denmark, working on Danish projects, but at the same time working with UK colleagues. And we well, just came back from, from, from Birmingham where we had our uh, network uh, meeting. So, you know, the collaboration is, is ongoing. Okay, fantastic. And I'm really fascinated to, you know, hear how you found Poland after, mm -hmm. you know, quite, well, a very long break, 15 years, right. uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, forming ultimately your adult life in a different country. True. So what was the impression when yeah. when you came back to Poland? I mean, Poland is a you know story worth telling. So, so it's one of the most successful economies now in, in the world over the last 30 years. And I um, mean, there are, a lot of things has changed. I mean, we're in Warsaw today, so I think you know this city is a you know is a great example. Look at the skyline, how city yeah. transformed to be like top tourist destination, um, and you know a technological hub. Uh, so this is something that is, is remarkable. So the relocation from Copenhagen to, the, to 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 Warsaw wasn't that difficult, right? Because in terms of like you know public transportation or mm -hmm. safety or cultural offer, so that was that was that wasn't that difficult. Um, and, you know, we talked about digital tools before mm -hmm. um, and, you know, do you develop them to make your life easier to you know, make these processes more efficient. Um, and for example, I just I'm just thinking about some daily examples like mobile banking system. Poland. This is one of the best I ever saw. This is a country of I think this is the largest EU country with the digital ID. And, you know, that helps you in a, with your daily life to communicate with municipality and, and do some 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 things with them. But also. Um, I realized how important that was, uh, the digital ID, when the war in Ukraine started and we've got the influx of millions of people mm -hmm. to Poland and how we managed to accommodate millions of people that came within just several weeks yep. without this digital platform. I don't know how that would be possible. So that was that was amazing. But I, uh, when, I, when I look at Poland, you know, I think the, you know, the Poland success is not only limited to economic growth. I think it's a uh, thing. One thing that Poland does uh, and, and is definitely difficult to, to replicate is our workforce is the number of STEM graduates, quality and number of uh, yep. STEM graduates. Um, you know, the, the talent pool of software engineers and IT programmers. And this is what, you know, brings the investment to a country. Yep. Um, so I remember when uh, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, came to Warsaw a couple of months ago. And, um, and he actually, one of the co-founders of OpenAI is from Poland. So one fifth of the initial crew of OpenAI is from Poland. And Sam Altman said, I actually you know the culture within OpenAI at the beginning was very much Polish because it was driven by, you know, how codes were written, uh, the discipline within within the team. So that was, you know, we just have to keep going. Um, you know, we have to keep investing and creating a platform, you know, for for younger entrepreneurs to turn their ideas into a business, into a product as soon as possible. Investment in, in large infrastructure projects. So so I think that's all important. And, you know, I think everything, you know, to sum up, I think everything that Poland achieved over the last 35 years is, is remarkable and something to be proud of. I absolutely agree with you. And, you know, I'm delighted that you made, you and your family made the decision to, to move back here and that you see so much value in what's going on in Poland. And certainly we're doing, you know, I think so many of my guests, you know, you, um, the whole ecosystem is doing so much to really boost, you know, absolutely. the innovation and startup uh, world. And, and obviously with, you know, fantastic cooperation with corporates, that's, that becomes even more stronger. So um, thank you so much, Jan. I uh, really appreciate you sharing your story. And of course, I wish you nothing but, you know, huge success in the, in the future. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers. And see us next time for Startup with Poland.